Uh, Travis's question for you, Darren, is as a self-improvement junkie, I tend to buy books, programs, and listen to podcasts all the time, always seeking another key insight that would make a difference, but end up feeling overwhelmed and stressed with so many great insights that I am trying to implement. What would be your best practice to avoid shelf help and transition more to an efficient action mode of operation? Okay, great. Uh, well, Travis, that's my uh, little brother's name too. I've always liked that name. So Travis and, and most everybody on with us right now, um, I can relate with your dilemma uh, for sure. Why? Because we're all, we're all strivers. We're all self-improvement minded. We're all committed to becoming better every day, right? So any idea, any book, any podcast, any blog, any opportunity where we might learn something might give us an edge, might grow us forward, and we don't want to miss out on it. So we end up signing up for too many things, reading too many things, listening to too many things, and be, we become just a wash in it all and do nothing with it. It actually does more to confound us, to confuse us, to make us feel insecure that we don't know what we're doing and that we lack the next information that we need. And you can end up suffering the syndrome that I talk about in Insane Productivity by becoming the over-motivated underachiever. I mean, sure, yeah, you read it all, you listen to it all, you show up to it all, but in the volume of it all, you apply none of it. You are just looking for the next idea. It can also make you an asshole. Somebody who keeps asking for ideas and new insights when they didn't do anything with the last one that you gave them. That makes someone an asshole. When I was building the first success-focused television network, I was producing shows with all the top thought leaders of our day. I was listening to all their advice, reading their books, studying their materials, and I never felt more confused, overwhelmed, and stunted. It was actually quite paralyzing. That is when I figured out how to separate all that I was taking in with these couple of strategies. So let me give you those. Number one, separating what I am onboarding into two different buckets. The first bucket is learn versus study, or you could call it marinate versus development. The learn or marinate bucket means that I could read, listen to, watch all sorts of things that I was interested in learning, but I, it was just fodder to stimulate my mind, to illuminate my creativity, to inspire my spirit. It's kind of like what happens when you watch an inspiring movie or a documentary. You're better afterwards, but you didn't sit there and take notes through it. It just marinated over your mind, heart, and spirit. The study or development bucket is what I am writing notes on, doing the introspection with, running myself through the exercises with, practicing out in the world, real world, reviewing for improvements and iterating on to incre incrementally grow that skill, ability, or capability. And that is very different. I'm not accountable uh, uh, for the application and results of the learning, but I am for the study. Does that make sense? It's kind of like, what we do here on Darren Daily, or even Darren Daily On Demand. It is more learning and marination. It is to ignite your mind, to inspire your spirit, to direct your consciousness and creative capacity for the day ahead. But there aren't any exercises or worksheets or results accountability reporting associated with it. So you take that by comparison to say Insane Productivity or our Jumpstart program or what we will be doing in Hero's Journey. You see, those are full-scale study and development programs where we will work on applying what you learn so that you can track, measure the progress, the results, and the life change. So the second strategy that I learned to ad adopt is no matter how much input that I was taking on from how many voices I was hearing to pick one person and go deep with them. That is why even though I was trafficking with all the thought leaders of the day as I was producing these television networks with the, you know, the most profound people on the planet, I was interviewing, I was studying all the icons of our time, I was still only taking mentorship from Jim Rohn. He was the one that I stuck with so that there weren't competing voices going on inside my head. Again, I was learning everywhere. I was marinating my mind, but I was only studying with one, okay? There's a big difference. That is why I went to Jim's Weekend Leadership course six times. Even though it was the same content every time, it was there to just remind, reinforce, refortify that single voice that resonated with me.
Otherwise, you'll find this person says to do this, this other person says that if you do that, you'll certainly fail. Do this instead, and it could become stunting rather than empowering. So I suggest to you, find somebody that resonates with you, somebody that you vibe with. You like their philosophy. You like their perspective. You like their character. And then go deep. If you vibe with me, then I suggest you go deep. If you vibe with somebody else, then I suggest you go deep there. But too many cooks in the kitchen only creates chaos. So again, one, learn versus study. Two, marinate versus develop. And three, pick one and go deep. So I hope that helps you, Travis, to go from or to stay out of the category of the over-motivated underachiever to move into the quadrant of the stunningly successful super achiever. That's what we are here to help you become.